Hello everybody, this is Mr. Rama. Welcome back to another episode of the Seattle Mariners franchise here on LB The Show 23. As we get closer to the All-Star break, that means we're also getting closer to the MLB draft. So today we're going to take a look at some prospects, seven overall as we get our second edition of the scouting report and potential future Seattle Mariners. If you guys are ready for this one, if you are, make sure you drop a like and you subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content. The first game we're going to take a look at today is between Puerto Rico and the USA, their U18 national team. We took a look at the USA's national team last scouting report and take a look at left fielder Bucky Gonzalez and relief pitcher John Perez. But today we're going to take a look at one of their starting pitchers in Mickey Dow. This is a game from last year. He's now 19. He's six foot 174, and Mickey Dow. From Los Angeles, California, is a right-hander who throws a four-seam fastball, changeup, cutter, and slider. Since a six-foot 174, and will be ranked 63. While the Mariners have him ranked as 41. Now he is one of two pitchers we'll see in this game. As we'll highlight the other one, we're going to take a look at on the Puerto Rico side in just a minute. As we'll also be taking a look at Morgan Hampton as Dow here gets through the first inning. On here is Morgan Hampton taking them out. He's 5'11", 171 pounds, 19 years old. He is a right-handed pitcher. You'll see highlights for both of them as this game continues, but I'll talk about each one separately. Starting off with Mickey Dow, highlighted his pitches. Four-seam fastball changeup cutter slider from Los Angeles, California. He was born in California, but both of his parents did grow up in Germany before they moved to the States, and Mickey Dow, born, decided to pursue a baseball career. He played one year after high school on the travel circle. He had a couple of offers from in-state teams like Fresno State and UC Santa Barbara, but instead Mickey Dow decided to bet on himself with a one-year travel year in order to potentially go pro in this year's draft. And it's kind of worked out because MLB has him at 63. We have him ranked as 41. Now his positives is he throws gas. Mickey Dow throws a fastball and a cutter that gets way up there. Same thing with his slider and changeup. He definitely it relies on his velo and it allows him to get a lot of Ks. His K per nine is a very good spot as well as his control being solid. Now you would think a flamethrower wouldn't have the best control, but that's not the case. He's got a pretty solid control and he keeps the ball in the ballpark overall. His weaknesses, he does allow a lot of base runners. He will give up hits. He will walk batters. Um, and he's just not going to wow you with his break. He's just basically a heater pitcher and if his heat's not on, then the batters can kind of lock in and get hit around, so that would be his weakness. On the other side, we do have Morgan Hampton, who's a right-handed thrower. He throws a four-seam fastball, a splitter, a changeup cutter, and a slider. He's 5'11", 171, and will be ranked 38, while we have him ranked in our 10. I don't know if I agree with rank 10, but that's a story for another day. He also throws gas. He is a very much a fast pitcher. And another positive with Hampton is you know what you're getting. I mean, we kind of know what's deal with Morgan Hampton. And that's also kind of a weakness because he's very raw and he's all right at everything, but he's not elite at anything, which is weird, which is why I don't know why the Mariners have him as ranked 10, so to say, if he's not really elite at anything, I guess, because he has a high floor, but he has a low ceiling. So that's kind of what you know with Morgan Hampton. Here's looking at Mickey Dow. I mean, you can see potentials in that 72 to 84 range. I mean, blues and greens across the board, but those hits and walks are his two lowest attributes, and which is means he's going to probably have a whip that looks a little higher than normal. As far as Morgan Hampton, I mean, that's what I'm talking about. He has great velo, but other than that, everything is just kind of average to below average, which, I mean, his potential is guaranteed at least a B, potentially an A, but he's very raw. Is it worth the risk in Morgan Hampton? Specifically, you're going to probably have to take him in the first round. Next game we're going to go to is a SEC matchup between Ole Miss and Arkansas, and today we're going to be taking a look with the Razorback squad, particularly one of their relief pitchers, a left-hander by the name of Douglas Kramer. And here's a guy that gets you excited. 6'5", 195, 22 years of old, throws a four-seam fastball, a slurve, a changeup. This guy, in my opinion, is a steal of the draft. MLB has him ranked at 114. Mariners boards, he's our second best prospect. Yes, that is a massive difference. Douglas Kramer, in my opinion, is an absolute maniac on the mound now you got to be careful because just because his MLB rank is low doesn't mean he's going to go low in the draft other scouts have been taking mine and i would not be surprised if he's a first round pick sec rookie of the or reliever of the year last year his pros are well everything as you'll see in just a second he is elite in almost everything he does 
He could pitch in the majors next year, if I'm being honest. I think he's that good. I think Kramer is that ready, which is weird why MLB rank has him so low. Because I think he's one of the best relievers in his draft class. Now the cons, he's a reliever. Do you want to spend a first-round pick, which is probably what you're going to have to use on Douglas Kramer, on a relief pitcher? Some people will say yes. Some people will say no. Here's a look at his thing. I mean, look at all this blue. I mean, that's insane. Great at everything. Fastball slurver is amazing. Changeup not as good, but Douglas Kramer, best pitcher in this class. But do you use a first-round pick on a reliever? Speaking of relievers, we're going to take a look at two more here in this game between VCU and UMass at Fenway Park. A fun matchup between two Atlantic 10 squads. The first one is for the VCU Rams, Tim Swift, a right-hander from VCU, who was formerly a Maryland Terrapin before he transferred to VCU. Throws a four seam fastball, a changeup, and a two seam fastball. Six foot four, 218 pounds. He is a top five MLB rank. They have him ranked as fifth. We, however, have him ranked as 69. So Tim Swift, maybe a little bit overrated on some boards. His pros is he has very good velo and control. And I always like for them to at least have two of the velo control break, and he does. His hits per nine is also in a good spot, and so is his K per nine and walk. So he's he's pretty solid overall pitcher if you look at his per nines. His one weakness, though, is he a bust? You know, why is he ranked on our boards 69? I mean, he looks like he checks the boxes, and it could be because of injury. He's missed a little bit of time. He opted out of his physical, which is a little concerning, and he is successful to the home run ball. You can obviously see out of those attributes, his home runs is a little bit worse than everything else, and he relies a lot on his fastball. His other two pitches, I don't think, are at the same level as his four-seamer. Well, on the UMass side, you have relief pitcher David Kinney. A right-hander who's six foot one, two hundred and twelve pounds at the age of twenty-one years old. He does a four-seam fastball, a changeup, a slider, and a splitter. So he's got four pitches. His pros as well. He actually doesn't give up a lot of home runs. He actually allowed zero this past year with the Minutemen. So it's always good to bank on not allowing a long ball, which is something Seattle's major league club has done a very good job at this year. He's also got solid hits per nine and K per nine, so he's very good and he's very reliable. I think he could definitely settle in as a setup man in terms of the Major League squad. Don't know about closer, though. I don't know if his clutch is quite there. On the cons, though, his walks are terrible. I mean, his walks per nine is atrocious, and that's something that, if it doesn't get better, could really hinder a pitcher at the Major League level. He's also controlled because of that, and could, he could just be average. You never know with David Kenny. He's got he's fully scouted, but he's still got a wide range of his potential. And you don't know where you're gonna get with them. But look at that walks. Future 35, 45. He's got a lot of work to do. He walks too many batters, in my opinion. And I think that's why he's kind of falling down Mariners draft boards. He's 82nd in terms of Seattle's camp. Now the final guy we're gonna take a scouting look at in terms of game flip is the only position player we're gonna take a look at today, shortstop. With Northwestern, who hosts Michigan here at Wrigley Field. A little fun Big Ten matchup as Xavier Bauer is the name. He is a switch hitting shortstop, which is intriguing. He throws right handed. And he is 21 years of age, 5'10, 206 pounds. MLB rank has him at 86, while we have him ranked as 93 on our board. So a little bit below what MLB thinks. But I don't think that's necessarily a knock on Xavier Bauer. He is very versatile. I mean, we talked. We have Dylan Moore and we have Sam Haggerty, two amazing utility infielders for us who they don't hit the best, so to say, all the time, but they're very reliable. That's something you kind of get with Xavier Bauer. And I mean, speaking of Dylan Moore, he, imagine, he gives me a lot of the same similarities. Not overall best bat, but very versatile and very quick. Uh, Moore is one of our best base stealers. I think Xavier Bauer could also fit in that exact same mold. He's got great speed. He's very aggressive on the base pass. He can get you those singles and turn them into doubles with his stolen bases. But his con is, speaking of singles, how many are you going to get with Xavier Bauer? His hitting is very, very weak. His bat has a long ways to go. You're kind of just drafting a base off of a utility man, which, I mean, if he's ranked 86, that's about like a second, third, fourth round draft pick. I mean, maybe that's not a bad thing is to look for a utility man in those later rounds. Most of them are just kind of hit or you know, swing for the fences kind of guys anyway. So I think Xavier Bauer is definitely a guy we can target later in the draft. Definitely not going to give him our first and probably second round pick because of just that poor bat. And because of that, it also makes you wonder, is he going to reach his potential? You'll see in just a second on his player card, he's guaranteed B potential. But he's still so raw. 84 to 94, but his overall is 49 to 59. 
Xavier Bauer has a bright future. It's just, can he tap into it? Look at those bat numbers. He's got a long way to go. The last guy we're going to take a look at in this episode is actually not going to come with any game clip. It's starting pitcher Mario Osuna, who is a left-hander. He throws a four-seam fastball, changeup, slider, cutter, and curve. And the reason why there's no game clip on him is one of his cons. He's an injury risk. He missed all of last year. He was with the Houston Cougars, but did not play. He opted out of his physical, and you can see his injury risk is average. So is that something you want to take on with Osuna? Overall, I mean, he's kind of 75, 76 range, but... He's got good walks per nine, but if you look, I mean, there's really nothing else that really stands out with you, and that's another con. He could be a big bust, in my opinion. You see that potential? It could tap out at 84, but it could be as low as 72, and is that something you take on with Mario Osuna? I would say maybe late round, yes. I think he could be worth a late round flyer, but if you're counting on Mario Osuna as like one of your first couple of picks then I don't know if that's the case. Plus that injury bug, I mean, that could scare a lot of people. He opted out of his physical, and he comes with injury history. So that's going to do it for our scouting report. Let me know what your favorite prospects were down below as you get closer to the MLB draft. And next episode, we're actually going to recap the month of June and see how our main earners did. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you drop a like and you subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content. This is Mr. Rob, and I'll see you in the next one.